So guys, welcome back to another episode. This episode is a little bit different than the normal gaming episodes we uh, usually do here. I'm here as well as my son Elijah and then he was away on a band trip for a little bit but we kind of took a break from recording because he was gone so but now we're back. Anyways, this episode what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of an unboxing but it's not a video game unboxing, it's actually a console unboxing. I've always wanted one of these uh, for like the longest time but I've always kind of procrastinated it, procrastinated it over and over and over again. Uh, but eventually I finally caved and the price was really good and so I ended up getting one of these. So as you can see I got my package that arrived here from Amazon. Uh, let's take a quick look to see what it is. A Retron 5. Now, <laughs> it's not a PS4 is it? No, it's, I'm pretty sure it plays like older games like SNES games and stuff like that. Yeah, and again, I have an NES. I have also have a Super Nintendo. I got a Genesis. I got Game Boys. I got Game Boy Advances. All those consoles. Uh, the one problem I have noticed over the years is that some of these consoles sometimes don't last as long as they do, especially with the NES. Uh, you always have to clean them. You always have to kind of pull the little teeth where you put in the cartridges in. You have to kind of pull them out a little bit because it's kind of wear and tear. Then there's also the switching over from one console to another console. Now I'm a very big retro gamer. You aren't as much. No, he's all about the new games to switch to PS4. So what the Retro 5 does, I'll just show you a little bit on the front cover. You're able to play uh, Nintendo games, Super Nintendo games, Super Famicom, uh, Genesis, Mega Drive, Famicom. Now Famicom and Super Famicom are just the Japanese versions of the Nintendo or the Super Nintendo. Uh, you can also play the Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy uh, Advance cartridges on just this one system. Um, you're also able to play other game, other things like the uh, the Master uh, System. The only difference is with the Master System, you need a little cartridge, put it in first, then you put this on top. There's been lots of reviews on on the system, and you know, I actually, I'm looking forward to test them all out. It does come with a controller, uh, as you can see right here, that controller, but it's not the best. But it does support Nintendo controllers, uh, Super Nintendo controllers, Genesis controllers. I, I believe Genesis controllers it also supports. Uh, so yeah, so let's unwrap this and give this a try. Now, I already took the box out from the inside. Uh, it just was a little bit faster for me to uh, show you guys how the unpackaging goes. Uh, nice fancy bubble wrap. Everybody loves bubble wrap. Now I got the black uh, Retron 5. You can get the uh, gray one-ish, well purple, it looks like a Super Nintendo, but I got the black one. It kind of goes nice with my PS4 uh, and my PS3 console. Uh, you can look on the sides, uh, the connectors for the Super Nintendo Genesis and the NES controllers. Uh, you can look at the front, the top, um, the slots. It shows where you can connect all your other games like Super Nintendo Genesis, uh, Super Famicom. It, it's a really cool system and it feels really solid actually. Um, it's kind of sturdy uh, and I do li I like the, the weight on it. Um, you can also see that the packaging also comes with your normal uh, power adapter that you know works on the western side. It did come with the other accessories like the other connectors such as the uh, uh, power adapters for overseas or China. Um, just in case you bought this or you want, you're traveling overseas, which is actually a really, really cool idea. And the fact that they actually put these in here, I thought that was really, really good. Because, I mean, if you're traveling overseas and you bring your Retron 5, at least you know you can, or even if you're moving, at least you know that you can uh, still bring that stuff with you. Along with the package, we also have the controller. Now, this controller looks nice, but if you look at the weight of it, or feel the weight of it, it's really cheap. Uh, the analog feels nice. It reminds me of the Neo Geo Pocket analog. Uh, the buttons, it's got a right and left uh, triggers on it. Uh, the connector, I, think, I believe that's a micro or mini USB connector. Um, I got tons of those cables, as many of us do. You also got the home button, the select buttons. It doesn't feel too bad, but I would almost prefer just using the regular uh, Nintendo uh, controllers or Super Nintendo controller or Genesis. Uh, this is the connector that comes with the box as well for uh, connecting your controller to the actual system. I do suggest you plug it in and let it charge it for a while. It does come with an HDMI cable. It's about six feet tall. I ended up using a one that's a little bit longer just so I could hook it up to my uh, Elgato to record. And of course the manual. Uh, I'm glad that the manual's not super long. It's got a Retron 5 with a little hip hippopotamus I believe on it. 
And last but not least is the Hyper Skin uh, stickers, Retro 5 stickers, so forth. You can put them on your laptop or, or whatever. Um, usually I put some of these stickers on my on my computer. But right here we got my PS4 uh, PlayStation VR set up with my fancy controllers. I also have my NES Mini set up. I love the system, it's, it's so great to have. But I couldn't stop there, I had to get the Super Nintendo one as well. <laughs> um, my Nintendo Switch um, as well, sitting right there. Plus some Nintendo controllers. And here we have the Retron 5. Now you look at the back, on the front, on the sides. I mean, it's a beautiful system. The controller sits in nicely in the back. Uh, again, you can connect your Genesis, Super Nintendo games, NES slot right there, and the Famicom right there. Um, it tells you um, the little lights in the front glow, letting you know which game is actually in there. Now, one of the first games I tested was Rygar. I love this game. This game is kind of my nostalgia game that I always go back to. When I was younger, I used to play this a lot at home. And one of the reasons why I like Rygar is because he was a, a hero to the old world. Uh, he kind of got revived and brought back to life. And he is now has to, like, battle to uh, beat this Ligar guy at the end of the game to kind of return everything back to normal of the world. I love the music on it, although a lot of this game's music kind of sounds like this other game called, I believe it's Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde back in the day, but as you can see, this capture is actually from the Elgato HD60S. The capture is not bad actually, it's actually pretty good for a Nintendo capture. I also noticed that it does have some settings on there where you can adjust things like the uh, scan lines if you want the scan lines. Um, right now, I'm actually using the uh, Retron 5 controller that came with the system. Do I like it? Not really. Um, it's finicky. Uh, these games, like these side-scroller games back in the day, were meant to be played with uh, a D-pad. And as you can see, as I was trying to climb the rope, I had trouble adjusting the controller to be able to connect into that rope to be able to climb. Um, here, this one stage. I don't know why they always built a stage right here where you can, if you jump to the right, you can literally commit suicide and end the game right there. Why wouldn't they put a fence on this game? <laughs> Seriously. But again, like I said, the control uh, for the Retron was a little bit finicky. I did have an issue at the beginning getting it to sync. It was an issue with, I believe the battery just wasn't. Uh, right now, I'm just trying to show you some of the things you can do, like filters, scan lines, so forth. You can reset the game if you want to. But anyways, the controller, I wasn't able to uh, connect it. You, it takes like a Bluetooth connected connection to it. A lot of people say to use the 8-bit Go, or a, I believe it's an 8-bit Boo. Um, you can buy it, it's about 40 bucks. But I already spent that much money on the Retro 5. I didn't feel like spending another $40 on that controller. Maybe down the road, I will. I know I could use the NES controller for this. I didn't have a chance to connect it. For some reason, the controllers weren't being recognized. Um, I'll have to do a little bit more research on it. It could be maybe perhaps I didn't have the uh, firmware update. As you can see, I died in that game. But I still love that game. Um, the next game I decided to play, you know, it's again another nostalgia game. Now the first game was an NES. Now this is a Genesis game. So what I ended up doing is just popping the game out, popping the Genesis game, and the way the system works, it actually reads the game and it dumps the ROM onto your uh, internal hard drive. Now you have an SD slot you can connect to the system uh, to be able to dump the ROMs. As of now, I know that you can be able to take those ROMs if you do a little fiddling around with and kind of use those ROMs on other systems, but you kind of have to hack the system sort of thing to get that happening. But as you can see, Echo plays smooth. Now the analog, I love this part, because you jump in the air and everything gets sucked out and also you're like by yourself. It's creepy uh, when I was a kid watching this, but or playing this, but I still love this game. The music is just great. But like I was saying, I mean, you can mod the units, um, but it requires a little bit more technical skill, which I do have, I just haven't had time to do it. But the analog stick on the actual controller work, works really good for Echo. Echo is one of those games where you do need an analog, because um, he turns left, up, right, diagonal, diagonal down, all sorts of angles. Um, this game is also a great game. I mean, if you haven't played, this game, play it, you'll love it. The music is awesome. Um, as you see, I'm just jumping around trying to figure out the exit. The game itself 
is meant for you to be able to kind of figure out why everybody was sucked up into the air, not just your pod, um, but your your other creatures in, in the world that live in the ocean, crabs, uh, all those kind of fishes and, and whatnot. But yeah, like I said, I mean, so far the Retron 5 seems to be playing pretty good. I haven't really noticed much of a, a big difference between the Genesis console itself and playing this on my TV. Now, I am playing on this on an HD TV, which is um, kind of blown up, but the pixel resolution isn't bad. I do have to play a little bit more. We're trying to get the right pixel uh, quality to, to appear. But other than that, it, it's a fun game. The system plays really nice. And yeah, like I said, the controller for this one, did I did appreciate the analog controller for it. Now, the filters, you know, you got the scan lines, you can turn them on. I prefer turning the scan lines on. I love games with the scan line. It gives it a nice feel. I do have an old CTR TV that I do play these games on. I can go back to the main menu, play with some of the settings on here. Um, it's kind of cool, like, you know, the image filtering. Um, again, you can turn on the scan lines from here as well. The aspect ratio, the display over scan, all these little nice uh, little features you have to play. You can also play with the audio as well if you don't want the audio in the menu. Uh, another game I did to try uh, as well, which I kind of regret now because this game is hard. This is probably one of the hardest games I have on my Super Nintendo and I can never get past the last, the first stage. I can't. I've tried time and time again, and I love this game, but I hate this game. I love how beautiful, I mean, look at the, the panning of the trees and the layering and so forth. The colors, I mean, it's great. Um, the story itself, obviously, this is super uh, ghouls and ghosts, and it's a great game. It's so hard, though. It's as hard as the arcade. Maybe not as hard as the arcade because the arcade one actually, uh, I spent a lot of quarters on the uh, arcade version. Um, but back in the day when I was younger and I would play these games, um, uh, I w was always um, intrigued by the quality of the game first and then the gameplay. Uh, so games like this, games like um, Double Dragon, Bubble Bobble, uh, those games at the arcade I really like because just the, the quality visually, I like the animations, I like the. Uh, the colors they use, the palettes they use from the background. This game is a lot of fun. Now, with this game, I continue to use the retro controller. I figure, you know what, I'm going to give the controller a few tries to see whether I like it or don't. Um, it's not bad. It, it, it literally isn't. Now, some people have said that within a couple months, the controller usually no longer connects. I don't know if that's a firmware issue, if, if that's just a quality issue. Uh, keep in mind that I bought this Retron in 2020. Uh, the system has been out for a while now. I believe it's been out since 2014, 2015. I'm not entirely sure. I have to do the research on it. But yeah, this system seems to be playing the game pretty, pretty well. I mean, the controller itself, I'm not really complaining much on it. Um, again, this game does benefit from having an analog controller because I'm, I died right there. <laughs> That's one thing I hate about this game. The fact that this game doesn't give you a, a health bar. It literally, you have, depending on which armors you have, you may have three impact hits, two, or if you're not wearing any the armor, then just one. But the reason I died there is because I completely forgot that just about a, a lot of things, like right there, I landed on a coffin and I lost my armor because of the coffin. And so now here I'm trying to think, great, last time I was here, there was a treasure there. Well, there was a wizard this time and he killed me. But other than that, I mean, I haven't noticed really much frame rate issue besides the, I mean, the games in the past, you know, they weren't always the best frame rate because there were 16-bit graphics or 8-bit graphics. 32-bit, uh, depending on the system you have. But for the most part, I hate this part right here because here you go. I got hit by that torch thing. And now I got one more uh, damage point. And so I'm a naked guy with the white shorts running around. It's unbelievable. And the fact that the Retron 5 doesn't seem to be lagging. Uh, it doesn't seem to be really struggling with these games. Um, 
some games are gonna you're gonna have an issue uh, depending on uh, like some of the games that have certain chips that came with the game like later on the systems uh, I was hearing that the compatibility on them oh there you go I got a game I hate this game <laughs> but the compatibility on them was just um, it's it's hard on some some of those games. Uh, this game, I'm you know this is a GBA game, which is a Donald Duck game. I got this for my daughter a long time ago, uh, and she played this. I mean, literally, it's just a platformer game where you're running around uh, collecting stars and so forth. But I wanted to just try this game just to see how. I mean, the graphics don't look great, but keep in mind that you're blowing up a GBA game to you know a full you know maybe uh, 720 or, or or you know. Or you know 500 or whatever pixel it's it's really uh, connecting to, but other than that, I, I mean, I can't say I'm disappointed. I I like the system. I think the system is great. I think uh, the games itself are fun that you can play a lot. The library, uh, by the way, I haven't updated the firmware yet on my system, which I will be doing soon. Uh, you just put it on an SD card, and they put the SD card on the system, and then you go through some things and update the firmware. Uh, but it updates the compatibility list on certain games that weren't working before. Um, again, this game is just an easy platformer game. But, like, so you're able to fix some of the issues with some of these games. So we tried a couple games now. We tried uh, Echo the Dolphin. We tried Super uh, Ghosts and Ghosts. Um, and we also tried uh, the Donald Duck game and Rygar. Um, so I let my son try a couple of the games as well afterwards just to see what he thought. So first of all, what's your impressions on the actual console itself? It's a good console. I like the idea of it playing a bunch of different games at once instead of having a bunch of different systems and having to buy all that stuff plus all of it's just really old and so this system it's good for that stuff just in case you want to buy one thing and then play all the games that you have that's right and the thing is at the pawn shops or the cash converters or wherever you ebay or whatever you can find a lot of these games for really really cheap these days um some of them are a little bit more expensive, but that's like the super rare. But for the most part, it's not that hard finding these games. And it's really nice to have all the games in the system. Now, a couple of things I noticed about the system itself. I haven't updated the firmware yet, and I will in a bit. But I noticed that right out of the box, it's a little bit finicky. The controller itself is finicky. What was your thoughts on the controller during the gameplay? It was not that responsive. Like you would press it and like, you're saying, so for controllers like PS4, if you press a button, it instantly does the action. Like the response time? Yeah, the response time. It was very slow and it's just sort of finicky. Yeah. It's not very smooth movement. Yeah, exactly. That's We both agree on that, that for some games like Echo, it was fine because you can move your dolphin around at an angle. But you played Rygar, and the Rygar you find a little bit hard, especially when you're hitting the button and it wasn't responding yet. Um, other than that, when I did connect my SNES controller, it was weird. I pushed up and nothing was happening, but I pushed the B button and the B button went up. So I think that's more of a firmware update that I need to do in the system. Other than that, I think the system's great. I think the system's worth getting. I think the system, you can have a lot of fun. And like he said earlier, some of the older systems, eventually over time, they do wear out. And this is a, a really good option to be able to play your retro games on, you know, a lot of them at, at the same time. So I think for the money that I paid for the system, I think it was worth it. Um, your thoughts? How much did it cost? <laughs> it cost about $140 Canadian. I mean, like, it's okay because, like, it doesn't really, it doesn't really play its own games, which doesn't make it cost that much, unless you play a bunch of different games. And if you're, if you're definitely into collecting games, this is a good way to go to play your games. And also to avoid any of the pirating of, that people do on, you know, the other games and so forth. But other than that, Retron 5, great system. Do know that there's going to be some hiccups right at the beginning, but those things are usually ironed out towards the end. So, thanks again for watching our show. Don't forget the family that games together. Stay together.